Today's episode of Enemy of the State's Dank Podstash was so much fun. Had a great time talking about Brush Fire, a thriller with the author of Brush Fire, Matt Wotecki. And the usual special offer from our listeners from friend of the show, author and content creator Shane Radliff of Liberty Under Attack. This special offer includes... Brush Fire, you can find it at libertyunderattack.com, and you can take 10% off your order of Brush Fire or other books using coupon code DANK10. They also have books on self-liberation, freedom strategies, solutions, and more. Hashtag Agora, Second Realm, book on strategy, Ben Stone, Sedition, Subversion, and Sabotage. Shane's very own Vanu, A Strategy for Self-Liberation, are other books that are on there. you got to check them out. They also offer assistance to new authors throughout the publishing process, including editing, proofreading, formatting for Kindle and paperback, and full-service audiobook production. That's Liberty Under Attack Publications. Share your story. Find your freedom. Don't forget to pick up your copy of Brush Fire there. Also, shout out to Bad Moon Hemp. Check out badmoonhemp.wordpress.com. It's your one-stop shop for all your handmade hemp needs. I use their beard oils and beard balms. They're amazing. I'm seeing some sweet little Christmas ornaments coming out of there. Check it out. One more shout out, friend of the show, former guest Shane Hunter, a.k.a. The Abrasive Entrepreneur. Get yourself over to abrasiveads.com and opt in for a free first training from the man himself on Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs tied into marketing. This is valuable stuff that you can't go without if you're looking to market your content. That's abrasiveads.com. Now enjoy Dank Podstash 62 with Matt Wotecki. Enemy of the state. An enemy of the state. Enemy of the state. Dank Podstash. You're listening to Enemy of the State's Dank Podstash. Check out thedankpodstash.com to find every episode of the Dank Podstash, links to support the show via our Bitbacker and Patreon, Dank Podstash merchandise, and much more. If you'd like to advertise on the Dank Podstash, email us at dankpodstash at gmail.com. All right, here with Matt Wotecki, author of Brush Fire. And now, now, is it Brush Fire, a libertarian thriller? Brush Fire, a thriller? I've seen a lot of different uh, little tags after Brush Fire. What, is, what does it go by? Yeah, I think it's just a, a, it's just a thriller, um, but it has, it has libertarian themes throughout the, throughout the book. Um, yeah. Just uh, some of the little side stories. And then, like, the main story, obviously, is, like, um, just like a, a rabbit hole that that's just very interesting. You have to have to pick up a copy and, and read it, but it just goes into, you know, um, basically like the main character's world is just uh, completely changed once he finds like a, a book and like a stack of old, uh, of old books that he, uh, in, a, in an antique shop that he works at. So, <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, it's great. And uh, for, telling people they need to just pick it up and read it they're lucky because we happen to partner with shane radliff over at lua you heard that on the pre-show ad so you can get uh, your coupon code if you didn't skip through the pre-show ads i'm not telling you now you're gonna have to go back and listen so make sure to do that and you'll get a little bit of money off when you buy the book which you should because it was good i gotta say it was good but fucking somewhat dark dude <laughs> i'm sitting here reading it in the aftermath <laughs> of the uh of the whole whiskey warrior five, five, six thing that was going down where the dude was barricaded in his house and everyone's free freaking out about the boogaloo and stuff. I'm like, Jesus Christ, I'm getting paranoid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely does like, it follows down some pretty dark uh, paths or whatever, as far as like, uh, um, when he meets up with, uh, one of the freedom cells and then, uh, and then basically there's a lot of other like technology oriented uh, themes in there. They use a lot of like encrypted uh, messaging mm -hmm. and uh, cryptocurrencies and um, uh, hacking techniques and things. So um, yeah, just to evade the, like the, their surveillance smart moves when they're, when they're on the run, smart moves <laughs> that I haven't yeah. necessarily taken advantage of myself. 
That's a, that's something that I was thinking of reading this whole thing and something we were talking about right before I hit record too, is the, the lack of cybersecurity. Not to say that there isn't any that I employ, but uh, that's, that's a, an interesting debate among anarchists and libertarians and stuff like that. A lot of people kind of fall on the side of, yeah, you know, cover yourself in every way, cover your ass um, no matter how you can. And other people are like, you know what? They're, they're looking at everybody anyways. How are we going to get the word out about freedom if we're hiding behind all these walls and stuff? Why not just shout it from the rooftops? I kind of go with the second crowd. And it makes sense, especially like in the context yeah. of your book, that would not have gone well for the characters <laughs> if they were just out there telling everybody <laughs> yeah. they met. But I don't know. It, it's, it's, a weird, yeah. it's a weird thing to think about when you're in the, the world of, of having known this stuff, of being awake like the characters in your book find themselves once they're awake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And like, I, I think I mentioned um, on some other interviews that, uh, you know, it's, it was just kind of a way for me to, um, in this fiction book to like depict characters that uh, may, in real life, like it may not necessarily, you know, um, the your like awakening to certain things may not happen overnight. But in this case, like, I think it was, it was a good way, like in the book to just kind of um, make that sort of like a light switch, mm -hmm. uh, kind of like the matrix, where it's like, once they find out, and it's like, hey, my entire world has changed, like my eyes have been open to this, this new world. And I can't, I can't really go back to like my normal nine to five job or anything. I basically have to um, just, uh, you know, go, go on the run and like, um, evade like the people that are after me and, and that sort of thing. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like some of the awakening happening in the book and some of the situations are pretty on the nose. And I was thinking about that while reading it. And I was like, you know, is this, is this how it happens to people? Does this happen right away for people? Is it over time? And it definitely happens over time for some people, but I was trying to relate it to myself and it's kind of a mixture of both for me and I'm sure other people to where I had always been pretty anti-authority my whole life since I was a little kid without necessarily the, you know, putting it in the direction of anarchy. But once I found the ideas of uh, anarchy, libertarianism, whatever you want to say, freedom, it was just like a snap. It's like, damn, that's yeah. it. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, for me, it was kind of like that, but, uh, I did go through like the min minarchism phase and everything um, for probably right around like five or six months or whatever. But then I basically, you know, just kept reading and kept researching and um, listening to, you know, podcasts or whatever. Um, and uh, so that just to further, like, just became more curious, took it a little bit further. And, uh, you know, lo logically, that's like the conclusion that I came to. Um, you know, and then as far as like, as that relates to the book, I think uh, just using like those fictional characters to depict that sort of like transformation. Yeah. Um, although like, you know, you only have a limited amount of pages to do that. So it's like, it's kind of a, uh, it's kind of a good way to just, um, you know, he finds like this old book in an old stack of books. And basically it's like, uh, he, it just changes his, his life and his worldview. Maybe, you know, uh, maybe others, like, maybe you have a book that, that, uh, might've done that for you too, or a couple books, you know, mm -hmm. um, for me, it was, uh, it was with like Rothbard and that, that sort of thing for first. Um, and then like, just sort of branched out to other, other type of philosophical books. But I think I came like into this, uh, into the ideology just more towards like economics and stuff like cause that's just kind of my background so yeah yeah i'd, um, I'd say for me it was definitely the new libertarian manifesto so gotta love me some conkin yeah <laughs> great book and uh spooner okay yeah, that, yeah. lysander okay. spooner always lights a fire yeah. under my ass whenever i go back and read anything by spooner i'm just like yes this is awesome <laughs> Yeah, and I, uh, well, I had, uh, I think I just kind of, like, um, fell uh, fell across, uh, or came across, like, the Constitution of No Authority, like, through, like, a free, 
it was like a free download or something mm -hmm. and i think i just like listened to it like three or four times after that so for sure it's definitely uh definitely yeah so okay so you said you went through the path of minarchism and you're that's pretty much exactly the six month plan right well, you go, you find libertarianism yeah, or right. minarchism, you got that six month plan, then wham, you're an anarchist. And so many people say that. But what got you to that point? Like, what's your path? Where were you beforehand before you even were inspired towards minarchy? Oh, yeah. Right. So, I, I mean, uh, I was um, in like the, the, uh, in politics, um, quite a bit like I uh, sort of thought that that was going to be an effective way to make change or whatever um, but uh, you know like after the last election I think that it was just very discouraging for me and so it just something and something like caused me to I don't know if it was just being more disgruntled or frustrated or whatever but just caused me to look a little further and then I think somebody had sent me like a reading list with a uh, with like a lot of different different books on there um and then that kind of just set me set me on that path um i think just beginning with like the road to serfdom and then like uh some rock bard and then um i i, I don't think i came across konkin for a while like uh i think it was um shane's like agorism series agorism series uh on the on the old LUA podcast, so um, that kind of uh, got me to purchase the <laughs> those books, oh, and yeah. um, and then like since then I've given them to other people like because I think those are that's like really great good ideas you know, and in those books I think yeah the new libertarian Man manifesto and then the um, there's the other one I think that I have I still have here so. Nice. Another There's Konkin another book, one, um, the Agoras Primer. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, Konkin's my man. I'm, I'm working on a design for a ugly Samuel Edward Konkin uh, Christmas sweater for this month, so we'll see if we get that out. Okay, there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, <Perfect>. reading, <laughs> uh, reading lists are the shit, man. I think that's one of the best ways to show people stuff. Um, it's hard. Not yeah. a lot of people like to read anymore, but there are quite a few who do. And I'd like to bring up the idea whenever someone's yeah. uh, asking about ideas that I'm talking about and stuff. I'm like, hey, let me get you a, a list of books. Or like you said, give away some books. I think I've given away three, uh, yeah. uh, what's it, the New Libertarian Manifestos already. It's like, this is getting expensive. I need to find a cheaper yeah. way to get these. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I think that's great. Um, there are some good YouTube videos and stuff. And I really like that uh, your book and all the stuff on Liberty Under Attack you're able to get audiobooks for because audiobooks are the shit. I do I run yeah. um equipment pretty often, so I like to have, you know, safety headphones on listening to audiobooks and podcasts and things like that. It's a great way <laughs> to do it for sure. Um so you found your you, you got disgruntled a bit by the last election and we're looking for something new. What specifically about the last election would you say got you the most? Um, you know, just like, I think it just became really, um, just frustrating that, uh, or maybe just more obvious that like basically the worst of the worst have, bec have, have like stepped up and gotten elected, you know, over the last few years. Um, and then just sort of, uh, um, with like, uh, with the LUA podcast, uh, those really helped me. And then just sort of like emailing uh, Shane and everything, like I think um, just talking it over and discussing like why politics isn't really, isn't the most effective thing um, to uh, accomplish your goals or even like to free yourself mentally. It's not, um, it's not that great. Like, and it's just, it's just more of the same, like, you know, wasting time and wasting your time and productivity and everything when you could be, uh, a using direct action or um just t taking some self-accountability you know um, yeah if you want to see something happen like you should go ahead and uh, organize it or do it you know do it on your own and uh rather than just trying to gather a bunch of money and uh do some extensive political campaign like that's 
Yeah, it's just a way. It's just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's funny you yeah. say uh, the worst of the worst, too, because looking at the last few days, it, just of pictures coming out of the, the candidates of Trump and Biden. Trump photoshopped, getting his head <laughs> photoshopped onto Rocky's body, and now there's a picture of Biden sucking on his <laughs> wife's thumb at the podium. And it's like, these are the presidential front runners right now. <laughs> it's like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, it's yeah, I yeah, like, <laughs> it's just it is it's just a complete waste of time uh, putting all the time and money into that stuff, and that's an interesting. Um, looking at uh, your main character, uh, it's Henry, right? Henry's the name of the main character in Brushfire. Yeah. Um, and yeah. looking at the time wasters that you've written into the book that everybody has, and a lot of it's drinking, which I can definitely see. Because, uh, you know, a lot of people just drink their life away when they don't have any hope or interest in doing anything else. It's work, drink, work, yeah. drink, and whatnot. And it's it definitely relates to the political charade. It's just pretty much the same as drinking. You get drunk on that feeling of, oh, I'm running a fucking campaign and doing this and that for a politician. Yeah. And then you wake up with a hangover when you realize that they're just completely lying and not going to do any of the things they promised. Right. Yeah, that's uh... Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of the stuff in the book with uh, with Henry, he's he, most of the time he's or in the beginning, you can see that his life is just a routine. Like it's basically just going from work to to his truck and then going back home and, you know, uh, blacking out and then doing the same thing over the, <laughs> the next day. But then like he finds a or his landlord like invites him to this poker game and um then he meets this like character winston which is like he's like a uh like basically an anarchist that r uh, runs like a um underground like rave rave parties like in the industrial like in abandoned industrial warehouses like he doesn't really ask for permission he just yeah like runs these parties <laughs> And, um, so like, w um, like Henry finds this guy and they, you know, become friends, but then, um, something happens to Winston, like he, he gets arrested and, um, then it just kind of kicks off the whole, uh, the whole thing, um, basically, yeah. um, like the, uh, yeah. You know. Winston's a wild man. I like him. I, I think I identified the most with his character. <laughs> Maybe the beard. Not sure. The beard sounded yeah. awesome. Love it. Um, but yeah, it's uh, that's the he's living a risky life in the book, man. <laughs> I know there's there's something yeah. to yeah. to going out and just doing that shit. Maybe holding raves or whatever in abandoned warehouses, and it, it's certainly more descriptive for the book. Uh, but if you look at right now, look at fucking Virginia. There's just they're trying to pass laws to stop you from gathering to shoot guns with people in any sort of training capacity. They're trying to outlaw um, the use of martial arts for self-defense, like learn pe from outlaw people from learning martial arts, outlaw children or minors is, how, is the terminology they use uh, from using weapons in home defense and stuff like that. And looking at all this stuff that people are going to do and are doing anyways, despite the law, that's, it, it may not be as wild as throwing raves, although people do that. People are going to be doing things like that. <laughs> yeah. And another thing is it's, it's I would say, kind of dystopian, very, very authoritarian already in the world that you've set up in Brushfire. And I was like, man, this is just seems <laughs> like they've got everybody under their thumb. They got that grasp real tight. It feels like it's in a future from now. And then I'm looking at this Virginia stuff and, you know, gun laws in general and assembly trying yeah. to stop masks and everything. I'm like, damn, it's not that far off. Yeah, yeah, and particularly just like with the surveillance state, I think uh, um, even like reading um, Snowden's uh, memoir, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm pretty much all, all the way through, like um, just uh, reading about their capability and, um, you know, like they're still like very slow and, and lethargic, but they still have this like massive amount of power and like just unlimited funds to where they can just throw into like sure. uh setting up data centers and like serve like storing ba basically every single bit of data that you've ever sent out online is like you know um basically stored and uh um hits like some sort of a uh 
uh, um, our lexicon or whatever. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's definitely not that far off. And I, I think like, I just kind of did that by design, maybe to just see if somebody would, yeah, you know, somebody would like make that comparison and, um, you know, maybe just kind of question things a little bit more. So, yeah. Shout out to the NSA, uh, bludgy checking out this episode of the show. Go fuck yourself, by the way, you can put yeah. that in the permanent in the record for this uh, show number. But yeah, man, it's, it's, uh, in there, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's interesting because as I was reading it, and like I said, it was kind of dark and I would get a little freaked out with all the other stuff going on. I'm like, ah, come on, this is it. It's not like this now. And like I said, drawing those, those conclusions and it made me look into things a little more like think about what I'm doing and stuff like that. So I think it's a good, the book is a good thing to read. Even if you're already deep into the idea of anarchy, because it's going to make you think about that. You're, you're going to see what's going on in the book and you're going to say, well, how much of this is actually applying to me right now? This isn't that bad. And then you're going to realize it's pretty fucking bad. And if it's not that bad, <laughs> at least you'd be ready to prepare to either keep it from getting that bad or when it does get that bad, be prepared to do something about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, I think even um, it does, I did try to follow like sort of a common theme of some of the other uh, uh, LUA books um, as far as like the second realm and uh, like parallel societies mm -hmm. versus like trying to just uh, crush the state, like basically um, establishing this like freedom cell and then setting up like decentralized uh, you know um, cells like throughout throughout that general region um, I just tried to set that up to, in like a fictional environment to see or to like show people that it might might work you know yeah so, or so how, maybe how it worked so that was kind of based off the sedition subversion and sabotage book yeah or or even like um, um, even like the second realm book on strategy mm -hmm. which is also uh, on on LUA publications, mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, basically lays out like how you could, uh, set up like pockets of freedom, even like a digital environment, like say like an encrypted, uh, chat or something would be considered like a, right. would be considered like a, a second. Home. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. I was, I was, uh, reading that part of the book with the kind of secondary society that the, anarchists or whatever you want to call them had set up in your book and i was like hmm this definitely rings of uh, liberty under attack stuff it reminded me of vanu uh <laughs> as well you know setting up um uh uncoerced life away from uh, regular society so yeah that's pretty cool to find out little insights into the author's mind um so when yeah. <laughs> when did you write this book when did you finish it and get it published um yeah so I started on it about two years ago, and then um, I think uh, so most of it just kind of went down on the pages. Like it was pretty, like I already had a kind of an idea of, of how it was going to go. Maybe not necessarily the order that it was going to go, but basically um, I spent like a lot of time just like out in the woods, like thinking about what I was going to, how it was going to be organized. But I didn't really have any type of outline or anything. I just sort of um, created these characters. And then I also created like sub stories within the, you know, within the book. Yeah. And then tried to like tie it all together at the end. So um, like characters like from the different stories, like meet up with each other and then, um, and then just like come together to like for the common goal of just like, uh, further furthering like liberty so yeah um I and yeah yeah oh thanks so like basically um i think uh was it like maybe a it's got to be a, almost a year ago maybe or not maybe not that long ago uh maybe last january or something i think i uh, sent an email to, to Shane, um, and I saw that he had set up a, like a publishing company, um, which really like coincidentally like fit into, uh, the manuscript that I was already working on. Um, so it was pretty, pretty well finished. And, uh, so 
it really like fit in nicely with his uh, um, catalog over there. Um, just followed several like the uh, the themes that were that were going on over there with like the with his book on Vanu and then like the the uh, second realm and then like hashtag Agora is like another uh, fiction book. Mm-hmm. Um, it sort of fit well into those so um and then like he his uh company really like helped me with like editing and stuff and um and that sort of thing so i think like this would be kind of just a shout out to to whoever like is thinking about maybe writing a fiction book or a liberty oriented like fiction book they should uh you know maybe check out and see uh about LUA, you know, LUA pub versus like doing it on your own. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, and I really like uh, the idea of anarchist or libertarian fiction quite a bit because there's not a whole lot out there. Off the top of my head, like you mentioned, I could name yours and hashtag Agora as far as like absolutely yeah. <laughs> anarchist, not just someone saying, oh, yeah, this book is anarchist uh, in theme and whatnot without necessarily the author having been an anarchist. But we need more yeah. of that. And, um, excuse me we need more of that and i really like the style of bringing these ideas and information in a in a a fiction package Um, one of my favorite books as far as information being brought in that way is a book called patriots by james wesley rawls it's a little right wing and big l libertarian kind of statist as far as his views but it's like a survival (laughs) manual in a in a fiction book so it's easy to read so when you're getting these ideas in a in an engaging story I think it brings it to people a lot more efficiently. Um, so yeah, definitely. I think. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. ahead. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think you're right as far as like the using like that fiction as like a as a medium to just um, further certain ideas or whatever. Uh, I think that like people might be more accepting of uh when like fictional characters do it i mean may just be like uh oh hey this is just like a fiction book and then they may just be more open to to um seeing what people have to say as opposed to just like shutting down mm-hmm. at like a non-fiction book or like a really thick uh <laughs> like thick economics book or whatever like it's probably people are not gonna read that as much as they would if if they were just like pick up a uh you know like a fiction book or something you know yeah pick up a book like uh, the long plan that's in in your uh, in brush fire yeah, right. like that yeah. i think the reactions uh, people had to that book inside of your book are pretty accurate i think if you handed somebody the new libertarian manifesto that was say a you know just a raving statist like definitely going to vote for trump or biden or something they would probably get pissed <laughs> They might call the cops. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, handing that them. That is true. Yeah, I know. Just uh, oh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> handing them something that they can read that's a story. It's it's getting it's sneaking that info in there, which is why I like it a lot and why I like memes a lot. It's the same idea. You're sneaking an idea there through another medium yeah. that entertains uh, and you're getting people to think about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, for sure. Like, uh, um, yeah, like I think that nowadays, I think um, at least from just asking around or or just like in conversation with just normal people, like um, it's like, uh, when am I going to have time? Like, when do you have all that time to read and stuff? Or, or like, do you, how do you like, it's like you pick up a book and read like on a normal basis. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's just something that I do, but Mm -hmm. apparently that's like not something that's really normal. Um, I mean, like the other thing is like the audio books. Uh, I think that's like more and more a thing that's becoming uh, a good, you know, just more um, common and uh, people just don't have time or they just like read or they, uh, listen to like an audio book on audible or something um which is why i think uh that um you know we're working on an audio book for uh for brush fire too so hell yeah are you doing uh, I thought that was, uh 
is it just going to be a standard reading of it or are you going to have like voice actors? How, how are you guys laying that out? Um, I think uh, it's still kind of in the works, but I think um, we're just going to have uh, different people um, or a couple people do different voices. Sick. So it should be, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. It should be pretty co- cool. That's way more engaging yeah. in my opinion for, for fiction at least. Um, I think that's great. I, I like it when the author reads their own book for nonfiction, but if you got the author reading and he's mm-hmm. not doing the different voices or he doesn't know how to do it for fiction, I'm not, yeah. I'm not in it, <laughs> but no, I'm sure it'll come out great. <laughs> yeah. I've heard, uh, yeah. <laughs> who is it? I can't remember who was talking about it, but someone said Stephen King, uh, he read some of his books for the audio books and they said it was just the worst fucking thing ever. <laughs> Cause he's just oh, this monotone, yeah. weird sounding guy. It's like, yeah, you should have gone a different way with that. Especially if audio books are becoming the new <laughs> regular, you know, cause I sit down and read books too. I love yeah. physical books. I love sitting down and reading them. And uh, it's unfortunate that that's not really a thing anymore, but it's also nice to have the medium yeah. of audio books and stuff like that. So you can do it all the time. Cause you can come home and enjoy a good book sitting down and reading right. on the couch or whatever. And you can be working and filling your head with knowledge at the same time away from that. But I think that's definitely something people are missing is in taking that information, no matter how, like look at the fucking, the type of podcasts that are out there. There's just so much like what, what the fuck is that really popular one? It's the, the Ron Burgundy podcast, who the hell's going and listening to the Ron Burgundy <laughs> podcast to make it one of the number one podcasts <laughs> when there's shit out there like with real information, like Shane's podcast and things like that, or listening to an audio yeah. book of brush fire, <laughs> right. like, get out of here. And that's kind of, you know, and that it, it's <laughs> just more and more similarities mm-hmm. I'm finding between today's world and what I thought was a more dystopian uh, world in brush fire, but that people just like the mindless drivel. So I think if, if it's anybody's job yeah, to bring exactly. him out of it, it's ours. And you're doing a good job at that. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. So I think, uh, I think you're right. Like it's just people, um, people just need that, uh, extra maybe push or there it's, it's just easier to be comfortable, you know, just go along and, um, you know, not really, uh, question anything, you know, um, just go along with life and, uh, um, you know, I think, uh, with this, with books and, um, you know, getting into reading and stuff, it's just, uh, it's just so much more than so much more than like, uh, TV shows or things that are on the TV. Um, I mean, like there's not, there's not a lot to the information that's, that's sent to you, uh, through, through television. I mean, um, it's pretty much the same hollow Mm -hmm. message or narrative, you know, uh, and it's uh most of it's um you know just just stay stay comfortable stay like uh consuming um just obey authority and and then you'll be fine so no, <laughs> but yeah. i think uh with with brush fire um yeah a lot of i tried to specifically uh just um make most a lot of the antagonists like are um you know like cricket cops and mm. uh so sort of the things that you you do not you don't get on a if you were to just watch a one of the middle like Netflix series or whatever you're right. you're just gonna get the same thing like the, the hero mentality and the um, that sort of thing. So the so like with this type of fiction book, it's like it's now it's our chance to like do it the other way around. Basically, just show show those type of figures for who they really are. So. Excuse me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's not, I like that it, what you're saying with it's more, it's just easier to be comfortable and go along with it so that you don't get fucked with. And that's uh, it's definitely apparent in the book with a lot of characters, you know, questioning when someone wants to move outside of that. And the other thing that I think you illustrated very nicely is that when you do wake up to what's actually going on and you decide to not go with it or you can't continue going on with the flow, which is how I feel. Um, it's not necessarily safe either. So it's good to be smart about it, but I yeah. think the juice is worth the squeeze, man. You got to take a risk if you want freedom. And that's a huge theme in the book that I saw was being willing to take that risk for what you know to be correct. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, right. <laughs> and now another thing that was interesting too was kind of the grooming process, or I guess the watching of a person that they thought could be woken up. Cause uh, I fucking kind of, yeah. kind of do the dumb thing of just talking to everybody that I come into contact with like, Hey, check this out. You know what anarchy is, you know, <laughs> you never know who's going <laughs> to try to get you on a watch yeah. list or whatever. But what, what uh, gave you that thought? And do you think that's like the most efficient way or safe way to go about it? What do you think about that versus how I'm saying, just throwing it all out there? Um, yeah. Like, so I think from, for me personally, and then just like as a general idea i think if you try to maybe um in the course of your activities or day day to day life like um if you notice like certain people that maybe might be more susceptible like um so for example like the character sid like mm -hmm. he uh basically has has like enough of the like confidence to like somewhere it comes out of him like he's not a, he's like always been like a really like run-of-the-mill guy but then decides that like enough is enough and he's going to like protest like an execution or whatever right. so um i think uh if you notice someone like that that maybe like it t i think it takes a lot to um to take that action and um and maybe like maybe take a chance on that person. But I've noticed out of personal experience, like in a lot of cases, like it's probably not worth time and energy for a lot of people, for just a lot of people, just normal people, um, you know, maybe just people that you work with or people that you uh, just come across um, at a bar or something like you're obviously not going to waste a lot of time on that because maybe you just, you just have a feeling that it's not going to, mm -hmm. They're not going to react too well sure. with it, and you're you're probably correct, you know. So, <laughs> I like throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. Not only <laughs> because there might be an opportunity <laughs> to to see, you know, who's interested at that point in time, but also, you know, memes. Come on, man! I I post memes on Facebook as a main part of this page, <laughs> so I I got yeah. a little bit of troll in me, and it's sometimes funny to get into it with. <laughs> people who really don't like the ideas yeah but it still gets them thinking but i understand the risk and uh how the characters in your book are mitigating that risk um and one of the ways too which is cool yeah. is yeah. how they organize um how to find their meetups and stuff um with the whole uh, unmarked mailbox and the code that you have written into the book that's sweet i, I haven't deciphered yeah. it yet i haven't worked yeah. on it but you people you got to get the book and do that because that's just fun who doesn't love that shit Where'd you come up with that idea? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think that that just came to me, um, as more of like a, like a low tech type of, uh, way to do things like, um, you know, say that like basically, um, in the book, like they're in this environment where everything like digitally is under surveillance. So it's like, there's gotta be a way for them to like, try to like meet, meet up, um, with these other de decentralized groups. So uh, I just, yeah, I just thought of uh, this code that they use um, basically with like a, you know, paper book or something, which happens to be like Mises uh, human action or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like they, he picks up a book of, or he picks up human action and then the code is basically within like the pages of that book. Yeah. Um, they're able to decipher like where they, where the location is. So um I'm not really sure where it came from. Like, I think I just, <laughs> like, I was thinking about different type of ciphers and things that you could do, like, um, outside of the computer. Like, there, obviously, there's different ways of doing it on the computer, encryption and stuff. But but uh, when it comes down to it, like, lo like I think low-tech encryption methods, um, like, just codes and things, like, or, f or just finding, like, random, random codes, uh, using like books or newspapers or even like different graffiti that you know uh spray paint and like urban environments or whatever like um that's like really impossible to to break especially um or just only those people that know about it are able to find out so um it's just that one another method that 
that could be used in real life, you know, to, yeah, I dig um, the, for like the a low code method. stuff for sure. I love the low tech, um, much more so than the, the high tech stuff, the encrypted, whatever, you know, with, with any computer or internet, yeah. whatever, because I, I call me crazy prepper. People have, I don't know. I think prepping is not necessarily crazy, but I think the boogaloo is going to happen. Yeah at some point i think it's inevitable maybe not in our <laughs> lifetime whatever but there could be a point when electricity has gone and you need to know this low-tech way of doing stuff and there's even looking at uh, travelers um more commonly referred to as bums by a lot of people but there are actual people who travel as um a choice who kind of hide within that uh homeless population who have some pretty interesting um, symbolism that they use for showing where's safe to go, where's not, where to pick up supplies, that kind of stuff that a lot of people don't know about. So if you know mm -hmm. that stuff, you're a step ahead of the game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I think uh, there are some other, I, or like in some of the letters that uh, Rayo put out in like some of the Vanu books that, that Shane's published, um, there's a couple, couple methods that, that he uses to like hide food storage and uh um and like his different uh like squat spots or whatever and i mean back then it was like the 60s so it's like he wasn't really using a computer anyway like he was basically um you know just uh kind of recording where he kept like his food caches and stuff which is very it's really interesting like and it, it probably could still apply today too so oh absolutely absolutely because you know, if you're thinking about bugging out, whether it's for the boogaloo or for whatever reason, um, having different locations for different caches, whether it's ammo, extra clothes, extra boots, you know, food, anything like that, you're going to need to remember where it's at, but you also don't want other people knowing where it's at. So you got to have some sort of, you know, low tech encrypted method of finding it, or if you can't get to it, sending someone else to it. So that's good shit. Um, as far as yeah. the, uh, the group, I guess, the kind of decentralized community that <clears throat> we get to towards uh, you know middle end of the book. Um, yeah, I I'm, was trying to figure out what type of anarchist kind of organizing was going on here, and I, it it kind of just came up as kind of a, a panarchist gathering, I guess, black flag, no allegiance. Um, cause I, I couldn't detect any, mm. any leanings towards any of the hyphens, anarcho capitalist, whatever, which I thought was pretty cool. Is that, was I reading that yeah. correctly? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. I mean, uh, there was really no, um, like, oh, let's hurry up and set up like an economic system or whatever. It was basically, um, like let's, uh, organize, but let's like do it in small groups um, in sort of like a decentralized way, uh, maybe more towards like the, you know, the second realm type of uh, method. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I never really got into uh, any type of hyphenated um, like systems or whatever. Um, my guess is like through their trade and everything, they're, they're like some of the bartering and like crypto and cryptocurrencies and stuff. Like they're just using like free, free market methods to to uh you know trade goods with like um people with yeah yeah so um i i would say like that's pretty much um what it comes close to um but i yeah like i felt that it wasn't really uh important to just like um emphasize a certain uh system like an economic system or whatever like it's just basically up to up to the group at that point you know yeah um whatever really uh like i mean what they can try whatever works and uh you know if something works better than another another system then i think that's uh kind of the beauty of like decentralized groups too mm -hmm. um like maybe um and i think like keeping it to a limited amount of people also like uh it sort of is sort of like a protection mechanism against uh, over collectivizing and like compromising principles too. Uh, if you keep like maybe eight to nine people or or just like very small groups, and then if if it's like oh there's ten people, that's you you like go over there and form another group or something like that. It's it's harder to like 
have somebody that tries to take it over and dominate or or like form some type of a, a power group or whatever and then just basically that's when like i think like principles are gonna be like compromised yeah um so that's kind of what i tried to get at like in the in in the freedom cell group that they that they meet with that's cool that's really cool because that's something that i've spent some time looking into on my own and talked about on this show a little bit is the idea of dunbar's number of 150 people being the amount of people that you can know and keep in your head you know and if you look back i'm pretty sure almost universally universally with uh, hunter gatherer tribes they would split and go into a separate tribe once they hit that number to avoid exactly what you're saying uh a totalitarian control or more fighting or um, a problem with resource distribution mm-hmm. among the tribes. So that's awesome. That's really cool that that's how that came into your head and then went into the book. I like that a lot. And um, like you were saying about the different methods of trade, it's it's the Agora. This is what my head was thinking when I was seeing that. It's the Agora. It's the free market. Yeah. And it really rings true with uh, how Konkin described the small pockets of Um, free markets or anarchists or whatever of freedom springing up in a world of statism and eventually growing Um, whether or not it's growing as one group but just the amount of them growing to eventually overwhelm the state through a better choice that's that's really awesome i like that a lot yeah yeah thanks um yeah like um let's see um so like yeah and then there's like the sub story too or a couple sub stories um one of them is really like emphasizing how just really how convoluted like the legal system has Mm -hmm. become in america um the the fact that like uh there's like a really lengthy court scene in there where um there's a guy like winston's lawyer is like basically he's like oh (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah and like i really like um tried to make him a hateable character um just like you you know hey it's like i wonder what (laughs) right (laughs) that's like yeah hey i wonder what's for lunch today or whatever and basically like you know you have this guy whose life is like in in the hands of like the jury or whoever who's basically he's just like easily swayed by this like other charismatic like uh um prosecutor like he looks better than than like rob who's basically just like winston's defense attorney that like he uh is just like he comes in hung over most of the time like he doesn't really just <laughs> he's just like the only thing he wants to do is like pay his mortgage and like have and like just get drunk at home basically so mm-hmm. the usual drone <laughs> it's easy to hate lawyers already <laughs> yeah. but geez you made it even easier uh, yeah. And even the prosecutors, man, those guys suck too. Those guys were jerks. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, that's. I'd really like a book when it gets me to have an emotional response to a character, and it was uh, you were able to to draw that yeah. out of me for quite a few characters. So that's uh, that's good. Now I can cut oh, this out <laughs> if it's like a spoiler or anything like that. But I want to know more about okay. um, the the character at the poker game. What was it? Uh, all smiles or whatever the the fucking smiling guy. Because he was only oh, in yeah. it briefly. <laughs> like, what the fuck was his deal? Why why is he Mister Smiley Guy? <laughs> um, I just uh, I just came up with him as sort of like a random character or whatever. Like, it, I don't think it really like alludes to anything later in the book. Um, basically, he's just like uh, just like a um guy that like it yeah he didn't really have any like other meeting like he wasn't foreshadowing anything later in the book it was just uh just a (laughs) fucking annoying asshole (laughs) yeah (laughs) that's that's... right like everyone's really like (laughs) like i never i don't know if you played poker but like there's there's always like one person in the group that's like kind of like him where it's like (laughs) he's like happy or, or like happy go lucky or something like, <laughs> yeah. like and he has certain like tells or whatever so i just want to like made it more realistic by adding those that type of character like he's just like a typical 
card player kind of kind of guy <laughs> yeah and that was uh winston's first scene too when he came in for the poker game in the book right yeah yeah, yeah. that was immediately i was right. like yep i'm with winston fuck this smiling asshole guy i would do the same thing i would start <laughs> fucking with him because i don't if people if somebody's cheesing for no reason other than just to be annoying that's not i don't like that <laughs> Yeah, and that's another. I mean, like, I think that was the first time that I really like alluded to, um, really like uh, the ideas of um, is there something more to the society or whatever. Like, I think Red, Red in that scene like talks about like, oh, I, I worked hard all my life, mm -hmm. and uh, so that country's here to provide for me, and um, so how dare you talk about that sort of thing with right. like how dare you talk about tell about it bad with um you know winston's like basically saying like you know we're all just a bunch of slaves or whatever yeah. <laughs> and like and, and like red takes offense to that really easily so i was trying to just kind of capture the maybe like the older person that you might meet um or that you maybe you've even talked to oh yeah or it might even be like a family or something you know yeah <laughs> oh that was perfect that's exactly how it is too and it's not just online i know people say you know online interactions are always toxic and whatnot but that and that kind of interaction online is where you get the the boomer trump voter going off in all caps yeah. right away <laughs> That's exactly what happened. <laughs> yeah. But that absolutely does happen yeah. in real life, too. They start speaking in all caps. So de definitely an excellent read on yeah. that situation <laughs> in that scene. That was great. Um, and it, earlier at, near the beginning of the show, you're saying, you know, you only have so many pages to lay this idea out and stuff. Is that maybe yeah. we got more pages for a uh, for a sequel here? We can see the expansion of the second realm. Are you thinking about anything like that? Um, I did. Yeah, I did kind of give it some thought. Um, I don't know. I don't know how it might go, but maybe like, instead of like a sequel, I guess it'd be considered a sequel, but not like, I would want it to be more like a series where maybe, maybe like I use the same characters, but um, maybe just like a different storyline nice. altogether or something or. Yeah, I want to um, read more. But yeah, I'm still kind of trying to <laughs> trying to give some thought to the to that like it might i mean because i definitely at the end like i kind of just set it up for something more so nice um so it actually might work out yeah hell yeah I'm, I'm gonna need to hit up shane and maybe see if i can get your blessing maybe i can i can do a little voice work for winston in the audiobook <laughs> oh yeah yeah <laughs> i'm sure you guys already yeah. have it going but i like winston he's a fun guy <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, like, so, I mean, some of the characters, um, like I kind of tried to set up with certain personality traits of people that I that I've come across or that I knew maybe like friends when I was growing up nice. or whatever. Um, so like some of them might have like similarities to, to other things like I think, think like writing what kind of writing what you know, like writing mm -hmm. Uh, based on like real personalities is it's it's a lot easier like from a writing standpoint but then also it's like it kind of gives the it's like a more like raw type oh, of yeah. uh, um, writing you know versus if you tried to just like make somebody up out of thinner although like I did make up a couple sure. people just like but I but then like the, the actual like personalities like I tried to um tried to think of like people that I knew mm -hmm. um, that I could like kind of just uh, take certain things here and there, you know, <laughs> yeah. like mannerisms. And uh. so, so which uh, person on Facebook that, you know, did you draw the inspiration for B? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, name them now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. He's probably like going to be the most, I, uh, at least I hope that he's going to be the most hated character in the book. Um, and, uh, like, I think, um, what, I think what would be a comparison to him and somebody in real life that like, I guess would be more of like an informant maybe for, 
I, for like, I think uh, everybody like a who has a, a fucking thin blue line flag and is constantly saying they're <laughs> just doing their jobs, that kind of thing. You know, I have your six. Anyone who says yeah. I have your six about cops, that's so that's <laughs> that could be B for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and like right away, I just I just set him up as like a real like piece of shit. Like I just um, had him. I like he like hit his wife and stuff in the store, and like then tried to like act like nothing happened or whatever. Or like um, and like he he's he's like a very weak person or whatever, and and to, in order to like um, get all this power and stuff, like he just. Like it's just perfect that like the tall man comes along and just has has this like position for him because he then he gets to like you know basically just enact all this evil that that's then yeah. uh, that's been inside him you know um, and he has like this platform to do it and that's like through the through like the police so. absolutely he's almost a perfect cop with the with the wife beating and the just doing my job and getting power drunk too. Yeah. You know, that, that perfect low level cop to the, to the tall man's more advanced kind of agent. So yeah, definitely excellent character creation yeah. there. Um, on that note, man, we're here right at about an hour. So let's call her a fucking show. Okay. Tell them where you can get, tell, tell everybody where they can get uh, your awesome book brush fire. Okay. Yeah. So, um, it is available on Amazon. If you just, uh, you can type in, uh, my last name, Woteki, W O J T E C K I and then brush fire. And then it should come up there. Um, it's, uh, available for 20 bucks, but then, uh, if you head over to, um, Liberty under attack.com forward slash brush fire, you can pick it up. And I think, uh, Shane's running like a sale now. Uh, you can get it um, for like four or five bucks cheaper. And then uh, the, I think he also accepts crypto, cryptocurrencies, mm -hmm. which is kind of a fan of. Um, like I buy buy a lot of stuff with crypto. Um, but then uh, um, you can also, I think there's like bundles that you can get too, which mm -hmm. is pretty cool. Like if you are interested in any other books over there, like bundle them up and, and save, save some more money too. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if this episode goes up uh, after those sales are done on, on Liberty Under Attack, since you, dear listener, have made it all the way through the whole episode, I'll give you that code that I said I wouldn't give you at the beginning. It's DANK10, D-A-N-K-10, for 10% off your order at Liberty Under Attack Publications. And what better what better book to use it on or even a bundle? It would be perfect. But yeah, awesome, man. That was a lot of fun. Thanks, Matt, for coming on the show. And remember, everybody listening, obviously check out Liberty Under Attack Publications, but total freedom, no exceptions.